What's up guys, my name is Ace, and today I wanted to talk about and share some gameplay of the ninth Specialist character in Black Ops 3. Also, a little bit about the new map called Redwood, which is what the gameplay is on. And finally, just a few other things that were talked about during last week's Black Ops 3 Friday's livestream. If you guys didn't know, every Friday in the month of October, they're going to be doing a live stream at Treyarch where they talk about different things in the game. So different features, uh, different aspects of the game. I know I'm a little bit late with this one, but from now on, I'm going to be a whole lot more timely with this new stuff. Let's get into it. Alright guys, so first off, let's have a look at the ninth Specialist character, and this character is called Firebreak. This character's power weapon is the Purifier, which is essentially just a flamethrower. This seems to be very, very powerful up close. It seems to melt enemies very, very quickly, but it does also have a limited range. I'm interested to do some testing to see what kind of ranges these are, but it seems like it's something that is, is balanced when you look at the other Specialist character's power weapons, because though all the other power weapons are quite powerful, so it's no surprise that this is powerful. So it's something that you don't really have to be very accurate with up close. But if you aren't within range, then it's probably not going to be so great. So it's probably best for like clearing off hard points or maybe just killing a bunch of enemies off of a flag or in a choke point or something like that. So definitely interested in trying this one out. As for Firebreak's ability, this is called Heat Wave. And this basically stuns enemies, as you can see on the screen right here. You can see it's stunning the enemies and just allows you to kill them once you've stunned them. Now, a couple things that I'm a little bit curious about with this is, is it omnidirectional? I don't know if they mentioned if it was omnidirectional or if it was basically just the direction you're facing. Like, I don't think it's going to stun people that are standing directly behind you, but maybe it does. I'm not 100% sure. I'm definitely excited to see a little bit more about this. It seems like it's only going to stun people that are like directly in front of you in a pretty wide angle, as you can see by one of the clips here. Uh, he does kill a guy that's, that's quite a bit to his right or doesn't kill him, he stuns him, and he's quite a bit to his right, but I don't think it's going to be stunning people that are directly behind you or anything like that. I'm also really interested to see if this works through walls, and what kind of range we're working with with this ability, just to see how balanced it is. I'm pretty confident it's not going to be super, super long range, like it's not going to uh, stun somebody that's essentially across the map or anything like that, but I'm definitely interested to see what that maximum range is for this ability. Also, one thing I didn't mention with this ability is it not only stuns enemies, but any equipment that's within that area of effect will also be destroyed. Alright, so that's going to cover it for Firebreak. Let's talk a little bit about the brand new map that was revealed called Redwood. So Redwood appears to be about a medium-sized map. Uh, that's basically just what I can tell from the minimap, from watching the minimap during the gameplay. You can kind of get an idea about the layout and the size of the map. It seems to, to be kind of a medium to a medium-large size map. Uh, according to the developers, there's like three power positions that are very important on this map. There's an underwater route that you can take. There's a couple flank routes, and then there's some big open areas, as you can see here. I'm definitely interested to get my hands on this and, and actually take a walk around the map and see what the different uh, choke points and everything are, because just from seeing a few different clips, you don't really get a great idea of the scope and, and the layout of a map. Even if you play really close attention to the mini-map and try to get the layout from there, you still don't get a really great idea of what the map is like and what it'll play like when you finally get into it. It definitely is a really beautiful map. It looks amazing, and I'm very excited to get my hands on this once the game launches. Okay, so the two main things that were revealed on that live stream were the things I've already talked about, so the Ninth Specialist as well as the map Redwood. But there's a bunch of little things that we got from that live stream as well. I'm not going to list every little detail of that. I'm just basically going to fire off the things that I found to be very interesting that were confirmed or just introduced that we haven't heard about before. And I'm just basically going to fire them off as fast as I can here. So first off, you can level up specialist characters. This has been confirmed. You can level up your specialist character just like you'd level up a gun. And this appears to be how you unlock the customization for your characters, because I talked about this a little bit last week. There is going to be customization, so you can customize your character's head as well as their, their chest, basically. It seems like that is all you're going to be able to customize, but it is something for sure. And I really like that it seems to be something that you have to actually work towards and earn through challenges or even just through time played uh, with that particular specialist character. So definitely excited for that. I always love leveling things up, and the more things I can level up, the happier I am. The next thing that was revealed, I talked about this also a little bit over the weekend, 
Uh, the new hit marker was actually revealed, and that is a killing hit marker. It turns red when you get the kill, just like we've seen at the end of the life cycle of Ghosts, as well as the entire life cycle of Advanced Warfare. You get a different colored hit marker when you finish off a guy and he actually dies. Also, they have a little bit of a system where uh, the hit marker will actually grow in size as you do more and more damage to an enemy up until the point of his death. You can barely see it, like it's very, very hard to notice unless you're really paying attention or you watch it in slow motion. But it is something that's definitely there, and that appears to be a new exciting thing as well. I don't know if it's really going to make that much of a difference, but I really like that the killing hit marker is going to return. One other thing that a lot of people didn't notice is a new gun was, was basically teased here. Uh, the character actually walks over a gun called the ICR-1. Now, I don't know exactly what this gun is. Maybe that's been revealed somewhere else and I just haven't been paying enough attention. But it, this is a brand new gun that I have never seen or heard about before. So that's just something I thought I'd point out. You can see it here on the screen. And uh, that's pretty much it for that. Moving on, they also confirmed that theater mode is returning. I think this was confirmed quite a long time ago, but they talked about it a little bit more here. Uh, they, they talked about how they made a few improvements, especially for using a controller well, well in theater mode and everything like that. I'm excited to see what these improvements are, but they didn't really get into too much detail on that. But just in case you didn't know, yes, theater mode is definitely returning. Uh, as for prestiges, they said there's going to be 10 prestiges and the max level is 55 per prestige. And there's going to be something special at the end of the prestige, something extra. I have no idea what this could be, but I'm definitely excited to learn more about this. So it seems like they may not be adding just like 10 more levels on top of it like we, they've been doing over the past few years. Uh, in order for you to keep keep leveling up and everything like that. Uh, it seems like there's something else going on behind the scenes, something we've never seen before, and I uh, can't wait to find out more about this. Another thing that was pretty much expected, but a lot of people were still a little bit uh, worried about, worried that this wasn't going to re be returning, and that is offline bots. These have been confirmed, just like they've been in the past few games. Uh, you can go into a private match, and you can set bots and do all that kind of stuff. So that was finally confirmed 100% now. So for all of those people that are worrying, don't worry. Uh, it's definitely going to be there. And the final thing I want to talk about, like I said, there's a bunch of other little stuff that I just decided to kind of skip over because to me, it's not really that important. And I didn't want to have this video way too long. But the final thing was the taunts and gestures, which was teased a little bit a few days ago by Vonderhaar. And I kind of speculated a bit with it. It seems like it's not going to be a gameplay thing so you can't actually do it while you're playing you can't like give the guy the middle finger or something like that while you're playing it's more so going to be on the like the the winner's circle at the end of the game where it shows the top three players or whatever it is that's where your taunts and gestures are going to come in as far as i can tell based off of the information we got from this live stream so the number one character in the lobby will get to say some sort of a line that he picks whatever that line would be some sort of a taunt or something like that and also the other guys are going to be doing some sort of gesture or something like that uh, once the game is over and you can see them standing in that screen. So that's pretty much all I wanted to cover today. Like I said, I'm going to be a lot more on top of this news stuff now that I'm going full time with things. So this Friday there will be another live stream similar to this one where they're going to talk about various aspects of the game. I don't know if they're going to get more into zombies or uh, the campaign or what they're going to be doing this Friday. But this time on Saturday, I will have my video out on that talking about everything that they talked about in the live stream and my thoughts on everything. So if you enjoy the video, a like rating is always appreciated. And don't forget to subscribe for more if you haven't already. I'll talk to you guys next time.